Right. So from the hospital, we're hearing that four of the people who are injured are seriously injured and fighting for their lives right now. This in addition to the two people who already passed away. I want to show you something that's happening right here, right now. Uh, the police examining this bench. Now, why? There is a video online at the moment that the police published showing a man sitting on this bench, approaching this bench and sitting on it, who apparently fits the description of the shooter. And you can see in the video, anyone who has access to it, you obviously don't have it on your screen, that this is the exact bench that he sat on. And that's why the police are now examining it to see if they can, from this piece of evidence, so to speak, maybe get some DNA, maybe get some um, other evidence uh, regarding the person, how tall he is, or something of that nature. So these are the police detectives here right now examining this place right here, this bench that the attacker sat on before he conducted his brutal attack in which two people were killed. And again, we have four people who are seriously injured and still fighting for their lives at the moment, Benita. So, Alec, initial reports had one gunman potentially holed up in a building that was surrounded by security forces. Any updates yet on any other potential gunmen or accomplices, people who were maybe going to be helping him, standing by to help him get away? What is the update on that? Right. So again, the picture is still somewhat murky regarding how many people here were involved. First of all, uh, if there was just one shooter, it seems like there was one shooter and not two. But again, I don't want to say anything definitively because we, we have to wait for uh, the information to come out for sure because there still is a lot of uncertainty. But even if there was just one shooter, usually that person needs an accomplice. You need someone to maybe drive him to the scene. You need someone from whom to get the weapons. If he's crossing in from the West Bank, he needs help to cross. And uh, that, th therefore, after these type of events, the army conducts raids on uh, specific areas in the West Bank where they think accomplices may be present. We are hearing reports also that in Tulkarim in the West Bank, the IDF has been active in the last hour, maybe potentially arresting possible accomplices over there. That would be in continuation to the activities of the IDF in the past two weeks in the West Bank, specifically in Jenin, where uh, several gunfights took place between the IDF and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas gunmen in that city, as well as several arrests of uh, various people who were on the uh, terror list uh, as uh, people who were, were potentially going to conduct attacks or were involved somehow in the attacks that we've already seen. So, yes, uh, that the, the, the IDF uh, are, are going to be active uh, in some of these places uh, in the West Bank, specifically Jenin, which is, is not under complete control of the Palestinian Authority. It should be said the uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas, they have very strong footholds there and uh, activists with guns. We see many videos online of their militias just walking around the city with, with guns uh, out in the open. And uh, we're, we're, we're probably going to see more activity there in the days to come. Alec, in recent hours, you were in the studio talking about security concerns in this region right now. But the specific areas that we were discussing were three terror attacks in the space of one week in Israel, one in Beersheba in the south, one in Hadera in the north, and one in Bnei Brak in Tel Aviv. Explain for our viewers, many of whom are abroad, what it means when an attack happens in the heart of Tel Aviv, a cosmopolitan city, people of all religions of all ages converging where you are right now. What does it mean when a gunman opens fire in the heart of Tel Aviv? Well, it does carry more weight. I, we don't want to belittle the lives of people who live on the periphery or people uh, in those communities, for instance, in the Gaza border who suffer rocket attacks and casualties as well. But the casualties here, first of all, in number are far more than what they were, for instance, in the last exchange between Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Israel that occurred last year. And uh, worse, th 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 there's more casualties from these terror attacks. That's the start. And also, yes, the fact that it happens here in the middle of Tel Aviv, also in other major cities in central Israel, in Khadera, 
in Bnei Brak and in Beersheba, the capital of the Negev, in southern Israel, uh, certainly it, it, it strikes a chord here in the Israeli population in major cities, major population centers, and Tel Aviv, of course, the largest, uh, most major city of them all, one may say, and in the heart of that city, in Dizengoff, which is the nightlife area, and on the day, Thursday, the day where everybody's going out in Israel, the, 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 the number one day for going out, sort of the end of the week when everyone wants to let off some steam, and uh, we, hundreds or thousands even of people here on the street where I am right now, but now everything is shut down, and it certainly uh, strikes a chord and strikes close to close to home for the Israeli population and might also uh, make people sort of demand more to be done, although it's not clear exactly how to respond to these these attacks. Uh, but uh, there, there will be sort of more of an outcry, even more of an outcry, if that's possible, after what we've seen from those previous three terror attacks. Well, this gunman is targeting a place where thousands of people are converging. A life is a life no matter where a person is across the country, around the world. That is not the point. The point is going into Tel Aviv, you know that there are going to be thousands of people in a packed area celebrating and that is where this gunman or potentially more than one person hit tonight in the heart of Tel Aviv. Correspondent Alec Pollard, excellent coverage as always. Thank you for those updates live from Dizengoff Street in Tel Aviv.